It's important for nonprofit housing providers to track moves out of and into a housing complex, including all corresponding financial transactions, like recording any security deposits that are required and applying security deposits against last month housing charges. NewViews for Nonprofit Housing provides tools that automatically create transactions to track these activities using move out and move in journals. To use these tools, your books must have a move out journal, a move in journal, and a folder for former members slash tenants. Move out and move in transactions are usually generated at the beginning of the month after the housing charges have been added. A tenant or member should always be moved out of a unit before the new member or tenant is moved in. In our first example, Patricia Williams will be moving out of Unit 103 on April 30, 2020. Before we begin that process, we make sure that housing charges for April have been generated. This will ensure that Patricia's housing charge for the month of April is in her ledger. If Patricia has provided any security deposits, the move-out tool will automatically apply those deposits against the housing charge. The move-out tool can be run from any view of the current member slash tenants table. Right now, we're looking at the single period report view. We position on Patricia Williams' account and issue the tools, move member slash tenant move out command. How you fill in the move out prompt depends on how your books are structured. We strongly recommend using prefixes in your account names and this is the scenario we'll discuss. Enter the move out date which will be used for the date of the transaction that will be added to the move out journal. Remember that you can always press F3 to choose the date from a calendar. In the Reference Number field, enter the reference for the transaction. You can use the unit number or anything else that will make sense in your set of books. In the Description field, enter the description for the transaction. We're going to enter Transfer Security Deposit. Now we need to make sure the names of our move out journal and former members slash tenants folder are specified. If you don't track partial month vacancy losses or refund residents for moving out mid month, enter no in the post partial vacancy loss field. If you do track vacancy losses, you must specify whether you track market and RGI vacancy losses separately or together, and there are a few more fields to fill in. Now we can click Continue, then click OK to confirm that we want the Move Out transaction to be created. The Move Out tool did the following. It replaced the member slash tenant account in the current member slash tenants folder with an account representing the vacant unit. It moved the member slash tenant account to the former member slash tenants folder. It created a transaction in the move out journal that applies the balance of all deposit accounts associated with that unit against the balance of the member slash tenant account. If you track vacancy losses, the Move Out tool will also post any partial month refunds to the appropriate vacancy loss accounts. Let's take a quick look at the ledger for the 103 Williams account by positioning on the account name in the Credit Account column and pressing F9. Now that Patricia Williams' last month deposit has been applied against the balance of her account, there's a negative balance of $8.50, which is owed to the tenant. This amounts represent accrued interest on her last month's rent deposit. Note that interest on security deposits may or may not accrue, depending on the housing provider. 
Now that we've moved Patricia Williams out of Unit 103, we're going to move Alex Crawford into that unit using the Move In tool. First, we'll look at using the Move In tool when you're using a waitlist in New Views. All we have to do is position on the account to be moved in and issue the command Tools, Move Member slash Tenant, Move In. As with the Move Out tool, how you fill in the prompt depends on whether you use prefixes in your account names. As using prefixes is our recommended approach, that's how we'll proceed. The Move In Date, Reference, and Description will all be used for the transaction that will be added to the Move In Journal. We'll enter Security Deposit for the description. We need to specify the names of our move-in journal and the current member slash tenants folder. Now we have to enter the prefix we'll use for the new account that'll be added to the current member slash tenants folder. In this set of books, the prefix we use for member slash tenant accounts is the unit number. Lastly, we need to enter any deposits that are required from the new tenant. These are recorded using the Deposit Accounts tab in the Move In prompt. Up to five security deposits can be tracked. We only track security deposits for last month's rent in this set of books, so we'll enter LMR as the first deposit account suffix and $1,036 as the amount required. Now we can click Continue, then click OK to confirm that we want the move-in transaction to be created. In this example, the move-in tool did the following. It moved the account wait-crawford from the waitlist table to the current member slash tenants table and renamed it 103-crawford. It deleted the 103-vacant account that had been created when the previous tenant was moved out. It added a transaction to the move-in journal that sets up the charge for the security deposit. If there are no security deposits to track, moving and renaming the new member slash tenant account is all that's done. Let's take a moment to go back to the account in the current member slash tenants folder by positioning on the debit account name and pressing F9. Notice that Alex Crawford's previous address has been transferred to the address history tab and the address of the housing complex is now his current address. Now let's switch to the rent summary view. Any RGI information that had been entered for the account when it was on the wait list is retained when the account is moved. If RGI information has not yet been entered or needs to be changed, you can do that now. For more details on adding RGI information, consult the manual or watch our video on the New Views for Nonprofit Housing RGI calculator. If you don't use a waitlist in New Views, using the Move In tool is slightly different. Position on the vacant account that was created by the Move Out tool and issue the command Tools, Move Member slash Tenant, Move In. Notice that the prompt is slightly different than the one that appeared when we ran the tool from the waitlist. Instead of filling in the prefix for the new account, we need to enter the suffix to be used and the account description. In this set of books, we use the member or tenant's last name for the suffix and their full name for the account description. Now we can fill in the deposit account information as we did before and click Continue. The Move-In tool has replaced the 103-Vacant account with the 103-Crawford account. 
We can now add any RGI information that may be required. Let's look at the transaction that was added to the move-in journal. The tool created a transaction that adds a charge for the security deposit to the new member slash tenant account, as well as entering that amount in the security deposit account associated with that unit. Moving a member or tenant to another unit in the same housing complex, or internally, is exactly the same as moving a member or tenant out, then immediately moving that member or tenant back in. Going back to our first example, let's say Patricia Williams is still moving out of Unit 103 on April 30th, but instead of moving out of the building, she's moving into Unit 104. We've already moved the tenant out of Unit 104 using the Move Out tool. This has to be done before any tenant can be moved in. We position on account 103-Williams and issue the tools Move Member Slash Tenant Move Internal command. The Move Internal tool collects all the information needed to move the tenant out and then in again. Let's fill in the prompt and click Continue. The Move Internal tool has done the following. It replaced the 103-Williams account in the current member slash tenants folder with an account representing the vacant unit. It replaced the 104-Vacant account with 104-Williams, the new account for Patricia Williams in Unit 104. It added the appropriate transaction to the Move Out journal and another transaction to the move-in journal. Note that all RGI information associated with the old 103-Williams account will have been transferred to the new 104-Williams account. We should review those details and make any required changes. For example, market rent may be different for the new unit. 